Make a lot of new faces on the OKC. What do you think of what they've been able to do this season? I think they're uh, playing extremely hard. To me, they're a, a scrappy and edgy team that has uh, one of the greatest point guards of all time running the ship for them or running the show for them. So, um, you know, they got a lot of vets. They play hard and they work to defend. They held the Clippers to 90 points last night. And, um, you know, we're going to have to work on both ends of the floor to get a, get a W. Yeah, just, uh, you know, invited him to come in. Obviously, he's our Sparks coach. And, um, you know, I, I always like to invite, you know, any anybody that's, you know, the, in the coaching fraternity, if they want to come see a practice or sit in our meetings, you know, they're welcome to. And uh, D. Fish asked about it, so uh, he, he's certainly welcome. And he's very good on TV, too. Excellent job on TV. <laughs> yes. What station would that be? Uh, Spectrum Sports now. Watch it all the time. <laughs> Tune in. Is that something that you've always done, or is that kind of after you took your hiatus from coaching and you went around and did that, you placed more of an emphasis on paying that forward? I probably put more of an emphasis on paying it forward, but, you know, it's it's something that's always been available to, to anybody that wants to, uh, you know, stay involved or whatever. You can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it seems like you've kind of used the first half to figure out which role players have it going and then maybe played those guys a little bit more in the second half. Like, if that's the case, can you kind of talk about what goes into that evaluation process? Yeah, it's really uh, it's a tough thing because we got we got guys on this team that deserve bigger roles uh, that I don't have minutes for, you know, especially with uh, with Rajan coming back and you know we know the impact Duds has on on the game and and Troy Daniels and Quinn Cook with their shooting and and overall floor game and um, you know there's not big minutes for those guys right now. So uh, we look at matchups, we look at um, you know who's been out. I don't like I don't like to see. Any of those guys sit over there uh, too long, too many games in a row without getting some run. And, um, you know, we just take it game by game with that. And then, you know, obviously, like you said, once once you see the game play out, you see how, you know, the guy that we put in there performs and uh, make a decision whether uh, we want to extend his minutes or go with someone else. Um, with Rajan off of his minutes restriction now, is it nice to just be able to fully have him? It is, and uh, you know, I kind of viewed it that way last game too, because even though it, the the minutes restriction is going away, um, you know he he did miss a significant significant amount of time. So I do view him still as uh, in, in a phase of uh, regaining his rhythm and conditioning, rhythm and timing and conditioning, and um, just want to be smart with his minutes. It's so rare uh, the playoffs that we have this sort of home and home situation. I mean, is, is as a coach, do you kind of approach it as? We're going to play whatever we want to play, or, or, or are we going to hold something back for that second game? How do you approach that? Uh, no, we don't hold anything back for a second game. You know, we treat this like a, like an isolated game. Um, you know, one of 82. And we try to win tonight's game, and then, you know, um, it does have a little bit more of a playoff feel in game two, having just played that team, and what kind of things can we uh, make you know, adjustment-wise. And um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get the second one.